Every year in September, Fefo watches the pink flamingo's departure from atop the Colon lighthouse above the Cayo Sabinal Peninsula in the southeast of Cuba. Fefo is responsible for the Rio Maximo Reserve, named after the river which runs through it. This natural paradise, protected by gigantic swamps, attracts other species of birds as well. The flamingos arrive at the end of June from Colombia, Venezuela, and all the Caribbean islands to reproduce here in this reserve, which has become the largest nesting zone for Caribbean pink flamingos. The first inhabitants of Cuba, the Tainos Indians, worshipped the pink flamingo. They called it the firebird because of its purple color at sunset. A very old Tainos legend says that flamingos are immortal since no one has ever seen a dead flamingo. There were thousands and thousands of them living throughout the Rio Maximo area at that time. Faithful's passion for pink flamingos has led this Rio Maximo peasant's son to study biology and ornithology, a passion which is manifested in his attempts to save this endangered species. The region is so difficult to live in and so infested with mosquitoes that only men from the area with a desire to live in the heart of nature, have agreed to work with Flora and Fauna, an organization created 30 years ago by Guillermo Garcia, a military commander during the Castro Revolution. These men share Fefo's passion. At the end of the 1970s, a dam was created which flooded the region, killing trees and plant life and, above all, the flamingo's nesting places. It was Fefo's idea to launch an intensive program to save these birds. Along with his men, he created, within the Rio Maximo Reserve, a Noah's Ark, designed to shelter young flamingos abandoned by their parents during the Great Migration, either because they were born too late or because they were too weak to travel. After two years of being raised and cared for, the flamingos that are strong enough will be released. Daniel and Nelson, two former campesinos from the sugarcane fields and soldiers together during the war in Angola, have come to help Fefo. Thanks to this work, the two men now live in peace and harmony with nature, and most of all, it has helped them to forget their military past. These flamingos were raised for two years in the reserve's corral. They are now adults and strong enough at last. Daniel and Nelson are going to let them go at the mouth of the river so they can finally participate in the great September migration.
Daniel and Nelson leave regularly on patrols which last for several days. Their job is to spot weak young flamingos in the immensity of the reserve swamps that are not healthy enough to migrate with their elders. It's the end of September and time for the great migration to begin. An old flamingo gives the signal and the groups leave one after the other. The migration takes place just before the height of the hurricane season, which takes place in early October and lasts for more than a month. At this time, the Rio Maximo waters rise and cover the nests. The pink flamingo is a very social species. Parents pay special attention to their young. Until the very last moment, they stay with those that are too weak to fly. They are thus given one last chance. These babies, born too late, are unable to fly away from the moon-like landscape of this flamingo city. They are therefore condemned. Nelson and Daniel have spotted this group of about 20 babies. The two men are the last chance for the birds to escape predators such as crocodiles and stray dogs living around the swamp. Daniel and Nelson build small, hurricane-resistant cabins all around the reserve. In addition to being used as camping cabins for the men who are out for several days, they also discourage poachers by showing them that they are not the only men in the area. The American embargo imposed on Cuba in the 1980s has impoverished the campesinos who hunt flamingos for their survival. To reach the Flamingo City, deep in the heart of the reserve, Nelson and Daniel have walked for more than two hours in thick mud. They've come to inventory the nests. The flamingos chose this area, protected by the marshes, to lay their eggs. Because of the dam's construction which drowned the region, the flamingo city's population was reduced to 3,000 nests. Today, thanks to the work of flora and fauna, there are 45,000. Adapting very quickly to their new environment, the flamingos use fibers from dead trees to build more solid nests, completely free of humidity. During the month of July, the females begin the hatching process. The babies are born in August and should be capable of flying in September for the Great Migration. Some mothers sense that their first egg is not well developed. They prefer to push it into the water and hatch another. This, however, changes the time of the reproduction cycle and thus places the newborn in danger.
In the early morning hours, after several days on patrol, the men meet up with Feifo again in the Rio Maximo house. Feifo is anxious to know how many abandoned young there are. Today is an important day. Fefo is organizing the capture of the abandoned young flamingos that Nelson and Daniel spotted. To do so, he needs other men from flora and fauna, men from the region who can walk for hours in the mud. Es importante, entonces los vamos cogiendo, los cogemos bajo el brazo y los vamos llevando eh, eh, bajo el brazo. No importa, lo, que, lo importante es que no dejarlos aquí, hay que llevarlos todos para allá. Pefo splits the men into two groups so as to surround the flamingos quickly. The men can easily get stuck in the mud. The young flamingos, however, can run through it at very great speed. Although the tactics for capture are simple, it's hard work and can take all day. In this sticky ooze called fango by the Cubans, each step is painful. With the hot sun beating down on them, the men, although accustomed to these swamps, move ahead with great difficulty. Aguanta, Eddie. Eddie, espérate. Ahora trajenlo ustedes por allá. Eddie, espérate. Once the birds are surrounded, the men have to herd them back to the enclosure without getting them overexcited. Although flamingos can live more than 50 years, they have very delicate hearts. At birth, the Caribbean flamingo is white. Its pink color comes from the Sinophygia, a microscopic algae containing carotene on which the birds feed. An adult weighs two to three kilograms and measures up to one meter 40. Fefo knows that by taking the abandoned youngsters in, he is going against natural selection. He does so, however, to make up for past errors. In 1998, 1,700 birds were captured. 80% of them will be released after two years of intensive care. The weakest ones, those who cannot readapt to life in the wild, are sold to zoos throughout the world, in Canada, Mexico, Spain, and so on, where they will continue to be cared for. The proceeds will be used to help finance the Flamingo Protection Program and to make young Cubans sensitive to the problem.